they say, every day is for the thief, one day for the owner of the house. But ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission, has reversed the role. It is now every day for the owner of the house. If you're involved in bribery, over-invoicing, or any shady deal, the day of reckoning has come. ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission, is watching you. If you're reported for any corrupt practice, you'll be investigated, prosecuted, and punished. Corruption is harmful to our nation. Join the campaign against it by reporting any corrupt practice to ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission. Let me join hands with ICPC, make a better day. Let's make Nigeria great again. ICPC, they want to hands for corruption. Break the chain of corruption now. Don't give, don't take. This message is brought to you by ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission. Prior to the enactment of the Public Procurement Act 2007, the World Bank's Country Procurement Assessment Report had indicated that for every contract of one Naira that was awarded in Nigeria, 60 Kobo was lost to underhand activities of players in the procurement process. This led to the loss of billions of dollars from the country annually, as well as poorly executed and sometimes abandoned projects, failure in service delivery, and so on. In order to address these anomalies, the public procurement reform was initiated and eventually led to the enactment of the Procurement Act 2007. How has this law been applied to ensure that due diligence is achieved in procurement processes? These and more will be answered on today's edition of Corruption Must Go, ICPC's weekly television program. My name is Murna Barnabas Atiai. But first, Joy Aja is here with anti-corruption update. Hello viewers, thank you for staying with us. I am Joy Aja with Anti-Corruption Stories. ICPC has arraigned the Director General of Project Development Institute, Prada Enugu, Engineer Dr. Charles Agulana, before Honorable Justice Buba Ibrahim of the Federal High Court, sitting in Enugu for allegedly committing procurement fraud. Engineer Agulana, who is facing a one-count charge, was alleged by ICPC to have sometime in August 2017 or thereabout while being the Director General of Projects Development Institute, committed procurement fraud by awarding a contract for the revaluation of land belonging to Prada in the sum of 23,500,000 Naira to T.O. Thomas & Co., even when the company was not a registered surveyor and valuer and did not submit any memorandum of understanding with any registered surveyor and valuer in its tender bid an offence contrary to Section 58.4b and punishable under Section 58.5 of the Public Procurement Act 2007. When the charge was read to the accused engineer Dr. Agulana, he pleaded not guilty to the charge. The defence counsel, G.D. Joshua Esquire, who had earlier submitted a written bail application, prayed the court to grant his client bail, stating that his client was a man of credible personality that would not jump bail. The ICBC counsel, O.J. Ochibo, did not oppose the bail, but said the court should grant him bail with stringent conditions. The presiding judge, Justice Buba Ibrahim, therefore, granted bail to the defendant in the sum of 5 million naira and two reliable shorties in like sum. Justice Ibrahim also asked the defendant and his shorties to submit two passport photographs each to the court and thereafter adjourn the matter for hearing. The Executive Vice Chairman of the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, FCCPC, Mr. Babatunde Irukera, has described the Anti-Corruption and Transparency Unit of the FCCPC as an internal mechanism for corruption prevention, adding that an accountability framework was the most important aspect in preventing corruption. 
Mr. Irukera, who recently stated this in Abuja during the inauguration and induction training for Act 2 members by ICPC, further described Act 2 as a very important component in regulating transparency for the purpose of improved integrity in the public sector. The accountability framework is the most important uh, uh, watchman over how people carry on in life. And the consequence management system is the greatest modifier of human behavior. And so an act to and the work ICP says you is a great an accountability framework. When people know that what they're doing will be subjected to screen, it makes them think twice. And then when things are truly subjected to scrutiny, it makes us change what needs to be changed. Speaking at the event, the ICPC chairman, Professor Bolaji Owasonye SAN, who was represented by Mr. Olainka Ayegbayo of System Study and Review Department, SSRD ICPC, noted that the inauguration was a clear demonstration of FCCPC's commitment to support the government's drive to rid the nation of corrupt practices, especially in public agencies. From our records, the act of this commission has been dormant for a while. But it is hoped that with this inauguration, the unit will be passionate to deliver on its mandate, which includes periodic sensitization of staff on and against corruption, examination of system processes and procedures that are prone to corruption, and preferring solutions developing and reviewing code of ethics for staff and ensuring compliance with SIM, monitoring budget implementation of the commission, coordinating the deployment of the ethics and integrity compliance scorecard in the organization, and, understand, and undertaking preliminary investigations into complaints or reports received amongst others. To the newly appointed members, I encourage you to work zealously and efficiently in discharging the mandate that has been given to you. Do not betray the confidence you pose in you and avoid any questionable act given the strategic role you are expected to, uh, to play. In her goodwill message, the Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, who was represented by Engineer Nura Kwali, noted that over the years, corrupt practices by public officials had continued to inhibit the growth and development of the country. But the efforts of the present administration at fighting corruption have substantially changed the narrative. Finally, in her acceptance speech, the actual chairperson, Mrs. Liman Gambo, on behalf of her team, expressed gratitude to the commission for finding them worthy of such positions and pledged to display high level of integrity in discharging their duties. That will be all on this segment. Corruption must go continuous with Myrna. Stay with us. How can it get better when we do not want to be better people? Do not want to be better. A lot of them youths just a waste away. Mm, I'm a politician, no they try for the case. Not so so tiff then they tiff for. Then go carry our money, then go carry them to overseas. Na 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 na. People know they try 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 them a loot them a scam them a bribe every time. Instead make we try make we find solution. We can they fight with they do corruption. Mm -hmm. In every situation we need to be better. Corruption is not the solution. Say no more looting, no more bribery, no more scamming. Me and you. Uh, me, I know we can be you. better, better, better. Me and you. But things can be better if we make ourselves some better. Inflation of contract cost, lack of procurement plans, poor project prioritization, lack of competition and value for money and other kinds of manipulations of the procurement and contract award processes were some of the setbacks that were experienced in procurement practice in Nigeria. What does the Public Procurement Act 2007 provide for if we are to attend a corruption-free procurement process in the country? Mr. Chibuzo Ikweko, 
is a procurement specialist. He tells us about the provision of the 2007 Act. The legislation in its entirety was intended to improve procurement effectiveness, increase value for money, and prevent corruption. The, prior to the legislation, we had procurement procedures, but they were regulated by financial instructions, which were issued pursuant to the uh, public finance management uh, laws which were in place. Uh, incidentally, uh, these laws were not as um, comprehensive as should be, uh, did not have as much uh, relevant specificity as it relates to uh, public procurement. And even the procedures set forth by financial instructions gave very wide discretion to officers uh, and they could simply, uh, they were more guided by their conscience than by the rules because the discretion was very wide. Also, there wasn't an Amsterdam tech party uh, empowered by law to overlook and verify an oversight compliance to procurement uh, procedures. Uh, so there were challenges. I, I, I remember the country procurement assessment report uh, carried out by the federal government and the World Bank in 2000 found uh, then that um, about uh, 10 billion naira was lost to you know, the hand practices in the procurement process annually uh, as a result of this. Even though some argue that uh, these lapses are still there in the world. So, uh, the intention of the Public Procurement Act was to streamline institutions, uh, streamline functions, streamline powers and duties in a manner to ensure a more effective uh, procurement process and to prevent corruption. This is why one of its principal provisions was to make open competitive bidding the primary or the default method of procurement. In essence, by doing that, it, it made sure that where you do not use open competitive bidding as a method, you would have an explanation that fits into the very criteria that are written into the law for use of other more discretionary methods of procurement. I additionally, created a bureau for public procurement, which is meant to operate as an arm's length, you know, uh, a regulator, you know, supervisor, exercising, you know, regular oversight on the material public procurement. Uh, additionally, it created a framework that allowed the issuance of detailed standard building documents, which provided uh, an opportunity for procuring entities to improve clarity in the process, clarity in the specifications of what is being purchased, clarity in the pricing, and also uh, makes it possible uh, and even better for the agency to know exactly what it is buying at what cost and to be able to make comparisons. So these are all initiatives to prevent uh, corruption. Additionally, the framework uh, gave good room for um, you know, the procurement entity to know who his bidder is, to even have beneficial ownership information about his bidder. The procurement entity, by through the issuance of his bidding documents, could request not only the qualification uh, you know, information from the bidder, it could also request information about who owns the company, its relationships. Indeed, the law required that every bid should be accompanied by a statement disclosing whether that company or that person has interest in any other entity that is bidding in the same process to avoid, you know, you know, bid rigging and a lot of those infractions. So he has numerous provisions that you know can prevent corruption, and then additionally has specific sanctions for infractions uh, of the law. The challenge really is the human element, whether or not we as individuals are implementing provisions of that act, but largely uh, it has very potent uh, provisions to prevent and uh, well, it will cause punish uh, corruption. Willful 
refusal to allow the Bureau and its officers access to any procurement records, altering procurement records, using fake documents like tax clearance certificates, ETC, are some of the offenses associated with procurement. Wahab Toy is a legal practitioner and procurement expert. He takes us through some of the laws guiding procurement and a penalty for violators. In those days, issues of making public aware of the job you want to advertise, you want to procure, it was not there. But now it is important and one of the foundation that you must advertise for public knowledge so that competent people can put themselves forward. I, I, well, and that says in competitive duty you get the best. But when you are doing illegal selections of contractors who are not capable, and two, they have made provision for a lot. If you look at section 16, it talks about how you can participate. It says first you must be a registered company, have a legal personality. Most contractors then were not registered companies. Even you have a farmer who has a, a, a construction outfit because you know the man in charge who is going to have a road contract without any technical knowledge. And I don't know, we have so many abandoned projects. But now the Act says, Section 16, legal personality, then there must be financial and technical competence of the company to be patronized before you can be eligible to it. We have, you know, it's part of the requirement for you to, before you can involve legally in construction outfit, you register with CAC. The law says that a, pro, a, a, a owner of a company, limited liability company, of an engineering, must be an engineer. That is the requirement. If it's not an engineer, by factual of the provision of karma, from the Allied Matters Act, because they will go into, when they open it, what is the object clause? And they're going to share with and other. You are not eligible. But in those days, these were practicable. So all these things were associated problem, which the act came to kill. And as at that time, we have saved a lot of money. And that way we have project being conceptualized and now being executed and filmed and by competent people. I'm not saying all, oh, there are a lot of corruption still going on, but there are penalties for it now. Before corruption, no penalty. At most, they will query you. But now, Section 58 is, of the Procurement Act is there. Any contravention of all the provisions of this act shall be tried, prosecuted. If it is a company, three years, and you return money. If it is a uh, officer, it's five years, and summary dismissal. They are there. It's not, shall be prosecuted by the uh, relevant agency. And that agency was even defined in the act, EF, ICPC and EFCC. So in a nutshell, the due diligence are already stated in the act in order for them to achieve economy of scale, procurement processes, a sample procurement process give you a good benefit to the society. Where a procurement process is flawed, with a lot of what I've said, over invoicing, inflation, no duty, no competitive uh, legal selections, the competence of even most of the contractors are in doubt. Are you getting my point? You can get the best. The issue of corruption is widespread. ICPC is deploying every means to get rid of corruption from both the public and private lives of Nigerians. Join ICPC every Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. as you watch Corruption Must Go. ICPC, the Anti-Corruption Commission. ICPC in fulfillment of the preventive aspect of its mandate, had organized a series of trainings for procurement officers. The trainings which were designed to address the many questions of integrity, transparency and accountability in procurement matters in the public sector was targeted at major players in the procurement industry, such as accountants and auditors general, commissioners of finance, directors of finance and accounts, and local government chairmen, including other procurement officers. Head of Procurement Unit of ICPC, 
Mr. Folayon Wahid explains the Commission's experience with these trainings. The idea came during the tenure of retired uh, Justice Baba Ayola, and it was as a result, and the tender of uh, the board members there, it was as a result of a lot of petition that came regarding uh, um, instructions of procedure on procurement processes leading to award of contracts to those that are not necessary to be recommended for the award. And um, in, in view of this uh, commission by the procurement officers, and the accounting officer of MDS and the procurement entities, perhaps they are not uh, acquainted with the procurement processes, not uh, acquainted with the law guiding the procurement processes, not understanding the approval threshold as it may be. You know, there are two types of approval threshold. The approval threshold for the MDS and the procurement entity, and that of a group of public procurement, the regulator, because they are still banded within the two. Uh, you know, MBAs and the BPP. So there are a lot of infraction over that. So they now discover, I think, the best thing is to complement the effort of the uh, Bureau of Public Procurement to train the, uh, the accounting officer of the MBAs and the procurement entity and the procurement officer as well, so as to sanitize the procurement processes and to build sanity and integrity in the system. Well, uh, so far, the um, commission has still improved tremendously. You know, we cannot be seen with that taking people's uh, books of records, taking their assessments, but we really improved. Tenure of the staff, even the personnel involved, myself and my colleagues, we have really improved in the procurement and process in terms of compliance from the regulators and the office of the uh, SGF. Because there are updates in terms of uh, circulars, memo, regarding improvements on the procurement process by the Bureau of Public Procurement in terms of uh, the, the changes in, uh, uh, what do they call it, um, approval session, because these are common in terms of uh, infractions, you know. So, and uh, in ICPC, we have been ensuring that you follow all the nasty circular or Western laws that have been passed to MDs. Like, for instance, in recent times, how this time around, what time recorded? Most MD like doesn't even advertise. On ICPC, we we'll also ensure that we put our request on ICPC website in the procurement entity, like our own board. There. We have a procurement board to ensure that we comply with the four core value of procurement, that is, that's competition. Provide a level playing ground for competitors. At least they be aware, they will bid, and we provide them to ensure that we have the best contractor to deliver good source in terms of either goods or works, as the case may be. And we also ensure that we comply with the essential step of procurement in terms of based need on assessment, because to avoid the next waste of uh, procurement, because part of why they study BPP and procurement is to eliminate wasted, to have economy, value for money, okay, transparency and accountability as an ethic standard. So we ensure that we follow those ones. And uh, we should ensure that before we award, they are cash backing budget and proposal. Because they cannot award contract with that cash back, which is usually being the price of some entities that lead them to you know, being uh, charged to court, as the case may be, or petition as well. The lack of profiling of the uh, contractors leading to substandard supply or abandoned uh, project. You see, because we ensure that we follow normal procedure in terms of the uh, bid opening, because, because they are the area of I mean, corrupt, I mean, bit corrupt area. Oh. Are you getting my point? This is where the most sensitive area. We ensure that we open the bid in line with the procurement act at the proper place where everybody will be, will be witnessed. And uh, there's a template where I put the representative of the um, company or firm that bid it will be there. It will be counted, mention the name, as the case may be. And when it comes to the financial business, we ensure. We have transparency in the need. Do not history or expect the error, call the contract to confirm before memorandum before tender, which is part of the next section, like I told you. And the tender was in section 22, has the power to select a committee to review, to carry the duty and those that are recommended by the procurement to ensure that those companies want to be awarded to in line with the act. And we ensure that our technical committee do their bit to ensure that they follow all the processes and ensure that. At each stage of uh, their, you know, doing their work, we have value for money. 
So at the end of the war, you'll be paid accordingly. Research has also shown that there are more than 56,000 abandoned projects across the length and breadth of the country worth over 12 trillion naira. These abandoned projects would have bettered the lots of many average Nigerians and created job opportunities for our teaming unemployed youths if the essentials for best practice procurement are strictly observed. ICPC needs all the support it can get to address the many questions of integrity, transparency, and accountability in procurement matters, thereby uprooting and eliminating corruption in all its facets in order to enhance the image of Nigeria. That's all time will allow. Join us same time next week at 3.30 p.m. for yet another edition. Bye for now.